Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia. Market up ever so slightly, but still just hovering around that two point four trillion, two uh, point two trillion dollar mark. Sorry, again, we've been up as high as three. We've come down to I think two point one eight. I think we got around about there, and you know we've got it up as high as two point five, and then come back down. Still generally on a downwards trending sort of angle, but. In, sorry downwards trending motion I should say but we have days where it goes up but then it goes down a little bit lower in the following uh, day or two after that so we just need to be careful at the moment in my personal opinion never financial advice uh, we're not out of the woods just yet but look we could be uh, only time's going to tell let's have a look at a few things though so today as you can see I've got lots of things open up top I'm just going to have a look at some of the coins I really like because well that's <laughs> it's my channel they're the coins that i'm going to look at unless you know unless sorry someone puts a request through for me to have a look at something else so if there's something you want me to have a look at just let me know in the comments down below and i will get to that uh in the next episode or another episode at least maybe not the next it depends when i get the message all right so bitcoin dominant dominance far out excuse me really struggling with the english language again so uh dominance is still hovering around that kind of 40 percent level we get up a little bit above we get a little bit below but just thereabouts volume uh way down that could change because if there's going to be a pump at the moment they tend to come on a weekend when it's easy to really change the markets but so far we haven't seen anything but we've got to remember it's sort of Saturday night, Sunday morning stateside time. So if it does come, it's usually sort of somewhere around about Sunday, but not always. That's not a guarantee. All right, Bitcoin price. So 46,000. Now we're under 47,000. We're really getting down into the low parts of it. There is a lot uh, of action happening on Ethereum at the moment. A lot of stable coins uh, and tethers being printed and things like that are being moved on to exchanges. So are they actively buying? Well, yep, we can see green, so they are actively buying. But is this just a bit of kind of a pump before they dump the market and a further low? That's the million dollar question. But a lot of stable coins, excuse me, have gone onto the onto the exchanges and they're either buying or getting ready to buy. I just don't know which one it is at the moment. There's obviously some buying happening. We can see it, but again, this could be just a bit of a fake out, you know. Pump it up a little bit, get everyone super excited, and then crash the market down to, again, another low. There's obviously a point that they're looking for that's the big players. It's just what is that, uh, you know, what's, and I don't mean a point as in they're trying to make a point, a point somewhere, like a price uh, point, that they're trying to get Bitcoin down to. And then obviously the stable, sorry, not the stable coins, stable coins are stable. The, oh God, I'm really struggling. Uh, the altcoins, far out. How did I not remember that? There's a point where they want to get the altcoins down to likely as well. But there's something interesting I'm seeing in the charts that uh, I will give you my indication of what I think is going to happen. I just don't know when it's going to happen. That is the hard part. But anyway, let's move on. All right, so we can see it's basically a sea of green. I mean, Terra Luna is just doing amazingly. So well done, Terra Luna. All right. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? I reckon Terra's got to be up there. It can't be too far off. Well, there you go. It was number one, so 17%. Hedera Hashgraph has done, done nice. Mana, uh, Adam, Chainlink. There we go, finally making a move. They haven't done too much for a while other than sort of go down. Gala's made a bit of a move. Engine, uh, FTX. So we've got a couple of double-digit movers, two really nice ones. One double-digit move that's not too far off my sort of nice point, which is 15% in 24 hours and then we can see i mean it's a sea green a lot of other stuff is going on so that's not bad what hasn't fared well in the last 24 hours all right so bora again don't know much about it helium down uh yfi had that pump on the news that there was a buyback going on now it's down a little bit but look the losses are very very minimal and i mean very very minimal there's hardly any whatsoever i mean sort of six percent's the worst loss and I mean, you only have to go down 11 coins before you're starting to get into uh, the green. So that's nice. I'm just not sure it's going to last. So let's get onto the charts and we'll have a look. So we start with the Bitcoin chart. Got so many things up there. It's probably going to take a, a while for it to work out what it's doing. All right, put the log back on. How did that disappear? 
Right, so this is the chart I've had for a while. And like I said, this is what I'm wondering if is if is this is what I am wondering if it's going to happen uh, to make this chart sort of play out. Now again, it won't be exactly the same, but so far it's been pretty co close. We keep setting lower highs and lower lows, and we are now we have breached outside of this. So I'm just waiting to see: Are we going to have a push down to here, or is this really it? Is this kind of capitulation because we've really been focusing around here, other than that big wick that we saw that was able to push it down? Are we now getting ready for something where it just kind of stabilizes around here, maybe dips a little bit low, and into the new year, everyone gets bullish and we start to make our way up? Or is, again, something like this going to play out where we sort of bounce around, we get one big push down into here, and then it's a bit of a V-shaped recovery to freak pe uh, to get people to think, oh, that was it, the bottom's in, and they all get super bullish again. And then we have one more big one that again takes us down to kind of somewhere between 32,500 and 34,500. So I just went 35,500, sort of, you know, thereabouts to cover that CME gap. And then we do get that V shaped recovery. And then we are, you know, off to the races. And I, again, I think it's possible that that might happen with a SEC spot Bitcoin ETF approval sometime next year. We know it's already been pushed back 45 days, the one for Bitwise and Grayscale. And I really think Grayscale would likely be the one to get it first because they have so much Bitcoin. You know, they're one of the biggest sort of wallets out there. Not the biggest, but definitely one of the biggest. So it would make sense that they would get the first spot spot Bitcoin ETF. Not guaranteed, and just because it makes sense doesn't mean it will happen, but that's just something I think could be the catalyst to turn it around. I think there's probably going to be more selling Christmas coming up, people getting nervous. Again, the whole tax loss thing, you know, people, big companies more so, but even some people have to take profits, and then we just get a couple of sort of capitulation things that bring us down. Now, whether it goes this low or not, to cover that CME gap, I'm not sure. But again, this is just something I'm looking at. I'm not saying this will happen. I'm just not going to be surprised if it does happen. Hence why I've got my buy orders in. Uh, I think I've got a buy order down around sort of just a little bit above there. So 40, sort of two-ish and a half thousand dollars thereabouts. Again, I've got another buy order in somewhere down here, 37 thousand eight hundred ish thereabouts again just above these lines because they might not actually go into there and if they do it's all right i don't need to pick the exact you know lowest uh point that you can buy that down to the cent i just want to be roughly within that range and then i most certainly have a buy order in down here now it's a little bit higher than 30 uh 35 and a half thousand it's just over kind of the $34,000 mark again. Because I think if we do get that push down, the CME gap gets covered. And then I think we really do get a explosive move to the upside. Now, as I said the other day, I could be completely wrong. This could play out, but just we don't get to here and have a V-shaped recovery. We get to here and continue to go down. So I am not throwing all my money at any one price point. I'm just buying incre incrementally. So again, I've got my 10% cash reserves now, which is nice. I want to keep it at that and even increase it. But on my dollar cost averaging that I do sort of weekly, fortnightly, I'm using that money to put uh, into these buy orders. Uh, and again, if I see a true bottoming formation, and particularly if I see something like this, and it quickly gets back up to you know this kind of $53,000 level, then I will deploy a lot more cash at that stage. But until I see something that makes me think we're out of this downtrend, I'm not really buying too much at all. But there are things that are starting to look inter look interesting on the charts. And like I said, I will chip away at things if they get down to certain prices. You know, my favorite altcoins, I just won't be putting a lot into them. But I will be, you know, again, we'll look at that because they're all up the top. But this is what I'm looking for, Bitcoin. I think it probably, we see some more downside until sort of January, February. It might not be February. Might be early January. Might even push out till March or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. And then again, I think it'll be something like a spot Bitcoin ETF approval that will just rocket it up. And then, you know, maybe we get that sort of blow off top where it goes into June or into November, as uh, Nicholas Merton from Data Dash has said. So that's what I'm looking out for. All right. Sometimes you've got to scale out a little bit. It's, you know, the day is sort of all over the place. What about the weekly? Where are we at on the weekly? 
kind of uh, that one is supposed to be on the weekly. So these have all gone and changed. So again, I showed this the other day on the weekly. We've broken to the downside. It's not looking good, and we're going lower again. But look where we are. There's a bit of confluence here, which is nice. So maybe this is the bottom. But if not, then we're possibly looking at something down here, down around the thirty-eight thousand dollar level on the weekly. And thirty-eight thousand doesn't sound so bad on the weekly because you could have it push all the way down to thirty-four thousand, cover that CME gap. And then it pushes straight back up to sort of 43,000 over a week. It could be some big moves. So it'll be a candle, something like this, where you see a big wick, but then it quickly pushes back up uh, to form that solid candle body. Now, what you can also do, and this is just to give you an idea of where things are, we are in a bearish sort of movement at the moment. Is it a bear market? I don't know, but it's definitely a bearish trend. But let's now go to the monthly. I apologize, this is going to take forever. I can tell my computer's running a little bit slow. Right, so this should be the monthly. Now, what I find interesting is we're sort of outside of this upwards trending channel here, but sort of sitting on the line as well. So it'll be interesting because this can easily push back up. We're not done with the month yet, but it also could push a little bit lower. But look where we've got a bit of support around that kind of $43,000, $42,000 mark. So maybe for the month, this is where Bitcoin might sort of get down to. We can see we've already wicked lower than that. We got down to 41 and a half thousand. But if this doesn't hold, then I'm really thinking sort of somewhere down around about here does. And again, have a look at that, 37,000 for the month. And again, that doesn't mean bear market. That just means this uh, upwards trending channel has been broken. And again, you can have it sort of close around here, 37,000, but you can have big wicks that maybe push down to 34, $33,000. So that might happen over the next month or two. And then again, what you need to remember is look how bar, far above the fair price line we are. So we still could come down to here, but the fair price is usually what you're buying at it. It's not a good in, indication of fair price, but it's the price that most people end up buying this at. Uh, in the bear market is when it hits this. So something to keep an eye out for. All right, let's have a look at Ethereum. How's Ethereum doing? All right, against the dollar. Here's the things I'm looking at. It looks like it really has been bouncing off sort of 37-ish hundred dollars. But again, it's still playing out this similar pattern. Lower high. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Now this just hasn't played out. That was a higher low, but again, it's already looking like it's getting to roll over. So we're waiting. So for me, I would definitely be putting buy orders in around about three thousand six hundred and forty ish dollars thereabouts. Uh, putting in buy orders around thirty. 300, sorry, I think I said 33,030. That is 3,600, uh, 3,620-ish dollars, sort of oh, no, a little bit higher, was up there. Yeah, 3,640 dollars-ish. Again, another one around about 3,300 and sort of 60 dollars. Again, just a little bit above these in case it doesn't come down. And if it wicks down a little bit lower, then so be it. You can't pick them all. And then look, if this doesn't hold, you, you know, you could look at somewhere around about here, sort of 2,900. That's definitely a possibility, but I'd be going down here. There's a lot more confluence down at the 26, sort of 50-ish level. 20, let's go right on the top of it. 2,660. I reckon that'd be a good place to have a buy order. Now, again, I don't think we're going to come down here and stay here for long if we do come down here and we're not in a bear market, because if we're in a bear market, we're going to come down to here and we're most likely going to continue to go lower. So these are the kind of prices I'm looking at and where to have some buy orders in. And again, I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at any price target or, you know, deploying too much cash in case my thesis is wrong and we are in a bear market. You don't want to be buying Ethereum at $2,641 uh, and find out that it's going back down to, I don't know, $1,400 or $800 or something like that. That's going to hurt. I want to make sure i got the cash on the side. All right. How's Ethereum going against Bitcoin? It's actually holding quite well. Look at it. It's almost 
up to its old all time well not quite but it's staying above some old support and resistance at the moment so we can see there it's just holding above and maybe it's getting ready to rocket and take off it's looking good at the moment but something you need to remember is when we're up here this is usually when we're getting close to a blow off top that was kind of a blow off top that was a blow off top just above it was a blow off top and we are here and now we've double uh, peaked above this again that was another sort of blow off top there now to wait and see what happens so against Bitcoin it's looking scary and again if we are in a bear market then expect things to come down but Ethereum you know it's looking like it'll hold well all right Matic let's have a look at Matic I've got to speed this up I've got a lot to get through and I don't want you to be here all day all right Matic against the dollar why is that on there I want that to be on the day thank you very much I want that to be on log All right, so here's this chart that I showed. Well, are we going to break lower or are we going to break higher? Now we can get rid of that. So I had that there before. We are still in this. And when if this kind of bull flag pattern plays out and you take this and put it onto there, you know, it shows Matic, you know, possibly going to like $270 or something like that. Now, I don't think it'll play out exactly the same. But if it did, I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. But Matic at the moment is holding really well on the dollar. What about Matic uh, on Ethereum? What's it telling us? A lot of things are sitting not too bad on the dollar. I... Sorry. We've got Matic versus ETH yet on the daily... So we can see Matic's holding quite well against Ethereum and it continues to move up. So Matic is actually a really good hold at the moment. It is outperforming Ethereum. All right, what about Matic against Bitcoin? I do have to apologize. I don't know why these have all sort of been lost, but. And this, again, on the daily, where are we going? Have a look and get rid of the log. Have a look how Matic has been doing against Bitcoin. It's been holding quite well and it even found the bottom. I spoke about this before, was at the bottom and is starting to climb. So again, it looks good, but we, you know, we really need to wait and see what's gonna happen sort of market wide. Here is ADA. Now it's taken a bit of a beating. It got to $3 and now it's down at a dollar sort of 25. But again, this is the range it's kind of been in. It peaked above, it came down below, hasn't quite reached the bottom of this box. So it's actually looking quite nice on the dollar. How's it performing against Ethereum? Well, again, it's now down for me in my sort of buy zone. Now, I don't, I'm not saying I buy ADA right at this price compared to Ethereum, but it's down in that zone because usually when it's down here, it's eventually going to break up. But if we're in a bear market, then again, this is gonna to continue to come down. So I'm just looking at it uh, as opposed to where it is with Ethereum. Now the dollar is what I'm finding very interesting. There's a number of projects that are just kind of, you know, in zones with the dollar, but they are looking sort of quite high against Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I'll give you my sort of quick thesis now. I think when the market does move, Bitcoin's gonna move first, Ethereum will follow second, all these coins will generally hold their range against the dollar, but they will get beaten down by Bitcoin and Ethereum because they will move and then they will all start to explode. That is what I think is coming. Again, have a look at now uh, ADA versus ETH. Like I said, it's down there. Now ADA versus Bitcoin, quite high. So again, the dollar value has really leveled out. I think their dollar value will likely hold if we are still in a bull, a bull market and continue to go up but I think Bitcoin and Ethereum explode and everything comes down a little bit lower. But ADA won't be too far behind. All right, Secret Network. So one of my favorite projects that I've, I've been with for a long time, back since they are Enigma. As we can see, this is against the dollar and it just keeps trading upwards and it has big moves up and sometimes it gets below. And at the moment it is below, but have a look where it's holding. Old support and resistance. Doesn't mean it can't come lower. Maybe it's got to come down to this sort of support and resistance here. So maybe down to $2.30. But at the moment, on the dollar term, it's not looking too bad. But we go over to how's it doing against Ethereum? Again, it's sitting quite high against Ethereum. How's it going against Bitcoin? 
it's still sitting quite high against Bitcoin. So that's what I'm saying. Is there a number of altcoins that their dollar value seems to have leveled out, which is really, really nice, but they're still sitting quite high against Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I just get the feeling like Bitcoin and Ethereum are probably gonna run, dragging their value down against Bitcoin and Ethereum, not so much against the dollar. And they're gonna get back down to in around these ranges and then we are going to have that alt season that everyone's thinking of. So that's where, that's where I'm at. Engine, let's have a look, same kind of thing. Look at these patterns, it repeats. It just gets in a range, makes a move up, gets in a range, makes a move up, gets in a range. Now we're waiting to see, this range could go on for much longer. Just because it's here, this could continue to come down all the way to sort of somewhere down around about here. So maybe 90 cents and maybe this range has to push out till you know may before we get some kind of blow off top who knows but at the moment again just in that kind of ranging period and you can even grab this push a little bit higher and say well that's really the range and again you could grab this and pull it down and go a little bit lower but i'm just kind of going where the most sort of confluence is the most confluence is around about sort of there so in a ranging motion at the moment on the higher end so it could still lose a little bit of dollar value and again all these coins are still quite high against Bitcoin and Ethereum though. So that was Ethereum. Look at Bitcoin engine is right up. So for me, in the dollar terms, a lot of these coins are looking really, really good, but they're still quite high against Bitcoin and Ethereum. So just be careful. V, have a look at this. Again, same thing. Look at that ranging sort of motion going on. It gets above, it gets below, but it's just ranging. And at the moment, it's looking on the lower end of it. So could this come down? Absolutely, I think it could come down to around about sort of six cents. It's at eight cents at the moment. You know, if you wanna, you know, save yourself possibly two cents, then wait, but it may already be at the bottom because look where it is, old support. It's around about there. So we just gotta wait and see what's gonna happen here, but it's not looking too bad uh, dollar terms. Against Ethereum, this is what I'm really liking. It is right down here. And what can we see over the history of VeChain? against Ethereum. When it gets down here, what happens after it? Boom. What happens after it? Boom. What happens after it? Boom. So for me, VeChain is looking quite nice. On the dollar, it's ranging. On the Ethereum terms, it's really, really low. Now let's have a look at it against Bitcoin. Still high against Bitcoin though. But that's because Bitcoin has, to, you know, it's the dominant force quite often. So. I get the feeling like again, I think Bitcoin runs first, I think Ethereum follows, and then your dollar values will start to go up. But again, none of this is ever financial advice. So in the Bitcoin terms, I'd just be careful going after VeChain here, but in the dollar terms, you know, probably gonna be all right, but there's no guarantees. Solana, as we can see, this is how it's performed against the dollar, and it gets in kind of sideways motions for a while. Goes a bit sideways, now it dipped down here again, you can put another square in there, really just kind of, ranged for what was that from august until january for a few months and then started to make its move and then again it started to range here again from april to uh, what's that august and then it made its next move and now again it's kind of in another ranging motion again will it get ready to go up and again here's the fair value sort of price this can be moved around now you can grab this line and go all right well we get a little bit more confluence really through here as opposed to we were up here before, but now it looks like this is more the fair sort of value. At the moment, it's looking like it's under its kind of fair value price. So they can be really good times to buy. It doesn't mean it can't go lower, but they generally don't stay under here for too long. And when they do, there's some big moves to be made. So again, you gotta make your mind up again. Some people might pull this and say, nah, well that's actually where it is. So it's still overvalued. Again, you gotta make your mind up. It's thereabouts. We'll go with the one where it has the most sort of confluence and I think you're probably gonna be around about here. So if you go here, maybe it's a little bit over, but either way, we've got sideways action going on. All right, how's it performing against Ethereum? Still quite high against Ethereum. So as I said, a lot of these coins are still quite high. I think Ethereum and Bitcoin run first and that'll drag these down. I mean, have a look at uh, Solana against Bitcoin. I think this will likely get pulled down to somewhere around about sort of here to here because Bitcoin or an Ethereum will run first, but then these will follow. I think your dollar value will generally hold pretty well. 
Luna has just been an absolute behemoth. I mean, have a look at it. It is, you know, there's nothing stopping it at the moment, but things can change. How's it holding up against Ethereum? Quite overpriced. So like I said, I get the feeling like Bitcoin and Ethereum will run first and it'll drag the values of these down. Your dollar value will hold fairly well, but I just think your Ethereum and Bitcoin will outpace them in the next first bit. Same thing against Bitcoin, quite high against Bitcoin. I think that gets pulled way down. Let's have a look at DOT. DOT on the dollar, travels sideways, makes a move. It's been in this big sideways motion for quite some time and this could continue on for quite some time. And it's still on the higher end of this box. So I'd really be waiting for it to sort of come down. I'd want to see it in and around the kind of 16, 17 ish dollar range, but you could also push it up to around about here, $18. That seems like a pretty good price to buy. But am I deploying all my cash? No, because if I'm wrong and this starts to go down, I don't want to get completely wrecked. All right, now DOT, how's it performing against Ethereum? This is interesting, like VeChain, way, way down. So holding its value versus dollar and way down against Ethereum, this could be a good buy. How's it doing against Bitcoin? Against Bitcoin, it's still quite high. So for me, be careful with most of these. Now, Aave, one of my favorite DeFi projects and the one I have the most uh, sort of invested in. Look at this sideways motion. I've said this for ages. Sideways against the dollar. This is accumulation more than anything. Because if it was truly dying, this would just be going, I could be going to zero. It's not. It's being actively traded. It gets pushed up, it gets pushed down. So we have been down to here before. And now look where we came down. We came down to about that same spot and it's already pushed up. I'm not saying it can't go lower. Maybe it has to come down to somewhere around about sort of here, 150. Maybe it's got to come down to 125. I don't know, but this just seems like massive accumulation. Ave ETH setting a new all-time low, but it, has it does look like it's found a base and moved up again not saying it can't go lower absolutely can but it's already at all-time record lows against ethereum so for me i like Aave. what about against bitcoin it is down to a range that doesn't look so bad so again this was the old all-time high and it sort of became support it's wicked down below and we did get down to close to it and it uh, wicked back up but I'm just waiting to see if it can't come down a little bit lower, but it is looking pretty nice. All right, that's a bit of a long one for me. So basically my summary is, I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are gonna get on big runs first. They're gonna drain a ton of liquidity out of altcoins. I'm not saying all altcoins. Again, VeChain was looking really nice against Ethereum. So was uh, Aave, but you need to take it on a holistic perspective. Look at how it's doing on the dollar. Look at how it's doing against Ethereum. Look at how it's doing against Bitcoin. And then even more so, look at how Bitcoin and Ethereum are doing, how the whole financial market space and investing market space is doing. If the whole place isn't doing bad, then these charts can be made invalid really quickly. But for me, I'm gonna focus on Bitcoin and Ethereum, not too much on the altcoins because I think they will run first. And then once they have had a run, then you're gonna see the altcoins start to follow. That's what I'm getting from looking at uh, all these charts. But as I've said before, so this is TA and I'm by no means a TA expert. TA is good until it's not, because it's not 100% accurate. It's fairly accurate and particularly for people who know how to read it well, but it can be invalidated at any stage and you've gotta be ready to sort of deal with that. So again, for me, I'm not deploying too much money at anything at the moment, but from what the charts are showing me, I think Ethereum and Bitcoin are the best bet. They look like they're most likely gonna fire first and then once they do, the altcoins will start to follow next. But again, that's based on us still being in a bull market. We might be in a bear market. That's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment. We've had a small win. Will it last? I don't know. You let me know down in the comments. I'll see you next time.